Hey guys, welcome back. So now that we have finished creating the custom user model, let's go ahead and register a user. So we'll be providing an endpoint where a user can supply their username, email, and password, and then we should be able to create their account. Okay, so to get started, I want to mention that I tried to record this video like three times in a row. So something always comes up and somehow I lose the recorded file. So one of the things I changed here is how I named these test functions. So I believe what we had was okay, but I just changed the names to make sure they are aligning with what the test is doing. So don't get confused on that. All right, so you could cross check on that, but let's go on and create our user. Now, what will happen? Let me first get my postman up. Postman. So what will happen is when a user sends a request, we need to handle it, meaning we need to have a view that handles it. So we're gonna go to our views.py. So we are going to be using class-based views here. That's because with, with class-based views, we can inherit a lot of functionality that already comes in Django, so we don't have to write a lot of code. So here I'm gonna set up a class. It's gonna be called register API view. So this one is going to be inheriting from a generic API view. So I'm gonna come here and import generic API views from REST framework. So I'm gonna do from REST framework, dot generics, import generic API view. So then we are gonna inherit from it. Okay, so when we inherit here from generic API view, we can be able to handle all our HTTP methods that the user makes individually. So we can do like get, we can handle get, so that's self request. Then we can handle post, put, patch, delete just like this we want to handle a post request because when a user submits in the form let's say on the front end we are going to be sending data to a server we are going to be posting data to a server so we're going to handle it as post request so text in self and request so when we get this data what we want is we want to get the data that the user sends which we can get from request dot data like this and send this data to a serializer now what the serializer is, is it's pretty much a class that re that is responsible to turn JSON data that the user sends to a program into Python native objects. Because when a user sends, when a user sends JSON, we need a way to map it to like a model object, okay? So the class that helps us to connect those two is called a serializer. So similarly, the serializer can help us to get data, let's say like model data, and turn that into JSON and send them to the user. So here I'm gonna create a class called serial. I'm gonna create a file called serializers.py. Okay. So over here I'm gonna import serializers from REST framework. So from REST framework, import serializers. Here I'm gonna set up a class. This class is gonna be called register serializer. So this one is gonna inherit from serializers.model serializer. And the reason why we are inheriting from model serializer is since we already have models, Django can already predict some of the things that we might want to do. Okay, so we'll see we'll see what those things are as we go. So yeah, let's set up a class. So when we do class meta, we can be able to add some extra information to our serializer. So here we can tell it to use the model for the user. So here we can do model equals the user. So let's import the user. So we're gonna do rest from authentication dot models import user. Okay, so the model is gonna be the user. Then we also want to specify the fields, okay? So the fields part is very important because the model has, actually this, let me first rename this to serializers and let's mess it up. Serializer, serializers, okay. Okay, so the fields are very important because with the fields, we can define which which keys and attributes or data we want to be sending to the front end or we want to make visible to the front end. So if we have data, let's say we have things like first name, last name, when the user last logged in, we might not want to be sending things like when the user last logged into the front end. So, but we know we can want to send the username, the email, okay? The username, the email, and also since we need the user to send us the password, we can also get it. So here we can also have the password. So I'm gonna come over here and also include password. And now when it comes to the password, we want this password to only be write only. So we don't want to be sending the password back to the user on any request or 
any query. So here, what we want is we can send a password. So we can say password equals. Then with serializers, we can define a serializer field. So we can say serial. We can say serializers dot child field. So we can specify like how long we would want it to be. So we can say okay max length one twenty eight. We can also have like min length. Let's say every password should start from six characters. Then we can define that this property or attribute should only be write only. So we don't want to send it at all to the front end. Okay, so now that we have set up our serializer, we can come back to our view and we get the data. So when we get the data from the user, we need to set it from the serializer. So here, when it's a class-based view, you can set up a serializer class. Okay, so serializer class, now we can reference our serializer. So let's import it so from authentication. Dot serializers import register serializer. Okay, so over here, what you can do is we can set up that serializer. We can set up a serializer, then we can now use the register serializer, or we can do self dot serializer class like this. Then now we can pass it the data. So you can say data equals request dot dot data. Okay. So now that we have this data, we are passing it to the serializer. Now we can check if this serializer, because the serializer is going to do some some validation. So how is it gonna do that? It's gonna match the data we are sending from the user, and then it's gonna match it from the rules we have set here. So if it's a model serializer, actually this actually this should be like this so if it's a model serializer it's going to try to match the data we are sending from the user and the rules that these or the validations that those fields have on the model okay so meaning when you pass the data here this is capable of doing those validations for us okay so here we can check if serializer then we can check is valid so if the data we sent to the serializer is valid then we want to save that user so here you can do serializer dot save okay now, when we do dot save, we need to make sure that our serializer implements the create method. So we're gonna go to our serializer here and also implement the create method. So we're gonna do def create like this. So create takes in self and also the validated data. So by the time this one is called, the data will have been validated. Okay. So what we want here is to create a user. So we're gonna do return user dot objects dot create user so then we can pass all our data so we're gonna do uh, validated data here okay so we are doing this because the user might only might not only be sending the information we have here but they can also be sending things other extra parameters so we can pass them here because you know if we go to our model then the create in our manager you can see that's it can take in these other fields and it's able to save them. Okay. So this also so we also need to make sure we are passing them. So if they send first name and our model has it, then we can save it. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go back to our view. Then we need to, after we save, we need to tell a user that the account was created and they can log in or something like that. So here we can return a response. So to return responses, Django REST framework already has some response classes. So let's import some of those. So from REST framework, import, let's get response. Okay. So here we can say return response dot response. So this takes in mostly the data and then the status, okay, headers and all these other things. So we only want to send the data. So how do we get the data? So whenever we create an object here by using this, using this create, the serializer is going to look at the fields we have here. And this is what is going to return in the data the values of of what it saved for these fields now notice that the password is only right on there so it won't be sent back so we can expect the email and then the username so i'm going to come over here and now return serializer dot data like this okay then the second bit can be the status code now when this now django already has a specific utility that gives us all the status codes now here we can say status equals status dot created because when we create a resource on a server, we need to send back a created response. Now the serializer may not be valid, meaning we might have failed to save the user information. So we need to return a 201 instead and then the errors that might have happened. So you can return a HTTP 400. 
actually not the 201 but 400 so 400 means that the request that the user sent had issues mostly maybe there were validation problems or anything so it originated from the user so that's why we are sending a 400 now when we are sending a when we are sending this response we want to send the errors okay so the the serializer also has the property for the errors that happened and it gets these errors by matching between our validations. So if maybe a password was not equal to six, it's going to know which error to send. And you can of course customize all that stuff. Also, it's gonna match through this. If this is taken, this is taken, it's gonna send us those errors. So it's gonna be reading everything for us. Okay, so I believe now we can test out this, but to test it, we need a way to expose this end, this view to the client. Now we do that by creating a URLs and also putting our URLs out there. So I'm gonna come over here and create URLs.py. So in URLs, I'm gonna have a URL pattern. So URL patterns, sorry, is an array. So here you can have a path. So when we specify a path, so that's like when a user hits an endpoint called register, then we want to serve a view. So we serve that view. Let's import views up here. So from authentication, import views. So here we can serve the register view, the register view. Then we want to call as underscore view because it's a class based view. So we need to put as view. So Django knows how to handle it. So the name is to uniquely identify this, this view. So Django can quickly using this name reverse to know everything else about the view. So now that we have our URL, URL patterns for the app, we need to make them available in the global URLs. So if we wanted to combine all the URLs in for a whole app, because here we're gonna be having things like login, okay? Things like login here. If we wanted to combine all the URLs that are defined in these URLs patterns, we can do that by using the includes utility, include utility. So you can, can import include there. Then here, we can also specify our path. So here we're gonna be checking when a user goes to API slash auth, okay? So when a user goes to API slash auth, then we want to be sending them to the URLs for the authentication. So we can use the, authentic the app name, which is authentication. So authentication dot URLs like this and save. So since we are including many URLs, this should be in include, okay? So now we can do include here, save that. Let's restart our server over here. Should be URLs, not URL. All right, so we start it. Okay, so we are able to get model serializers. Let's go to our serializer and, and serializers and see. So here, so we need to do serializers dot model serializer like this. Okay, so we also need to import path in our view and our URLs. So from Django dot URLs import path okay so now that our server is on if we click on it you can see that now it's not rendering our default home page but it is showing us the post the urls that are available so you see we have this api slash auth now to access this remember a user is going to be making a post request and the browser can't make a post request it can only make those post requests using the browser APIs like fetch through the XHR. So what we need to do now is to have a client that can enable us to make post requests or simulate how the post request should be. So I'm going to open up Postman. So I'm going to search for Postman here. I believe I already have it open. So it's here. Now I initially did some testing because I recorded this video like a hundred times. So what we want to do is you want to go to to your postman then you want to say new request and then you want to put our url so remember now we have slash api slash auth so we're going to put this then slash register because that's where our registration view lies then you put your user data in a json object you want to make sure that here uh in the body let me actually minimize this a bit you have json selected here okay and then you can create your json object and then you can send so I'm gonna first try without sending anything. So I'm gonna remove all these values over here. All right, let's see. Then try to save this. Okay, so when we send this information, you realize that they tell us that this field might not be blank. And that is being read from how we specified in the models, okay? 
So wherever, whenever we, we have something like blank equals false, then it's going to be giving us this error by default. But if we remove the full key, let's say we remove email in our request payload and send this, you see that for email it is required, so it's not seeing it. So these are the things I really love about Django and can really save you a ton of time, a ton of validation. So let's save a user. So here I'm gonna come and enter a, a an email, a username, and also a password. So for the password, let's say I enter this and try to submit. You said the user is not created because it actually created a validation rule based on what we specified on the serializer. Okay, so here, let's now create a solid password. By the way, you see when we get errors, it's sending us a 400, meaning the error is from the user. But now if we put correct information and try to submit, you see that now it creates our user and it gives us a 201. Okay, so yeah, so that I believe that's gonna do it. If we try to send this one again, you see that now it is also checking that the usernames are taken or they already exist just by looking at our models and matching validations okay so that's gonna do it for now uh, so in the next one i'm gonna come in and we start to log in a user pretty much so thanks guys for watching if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and thanks again